following interview was conducted with Suzanne Topping for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, September 18, 2008 uh, in Stewart Center 263. Also sitting in is her husband, Bob Topping. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about where you were born and parents and early years. I was born in Wisconsin, in Madison and reared in, as my husband likes to say, reared instead of raised, <laughs> in uh, Spring Green, Wisconsin. The only other person you probably ever know who came from there is Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> it's a very small town of about 1,200 people. And my high school graduating class was 35. Let's talk about <laughs> going to early years in school and then a little bit about high school. How, okay. Did you go to school close by? And I went to school in Spring Green. This, they had one... Catholic school and a public school <laughs> and it was just very small mostly farm children okay and about how many grades did you go there for eight grades I went through eighth grade yes and then on to high school there and well tell us a little bit about high school any clubs or student organizations and that well I was a cheerleader <laughs> and a drama club and editor of the yearbook well, it's kind of a, a busy right. time. Yes, right. you could be anything there. <laughs> and in the band. I forgot about the band. I played the bass drum. Oh, that's very good. You know, the Purdue Marching Band could <laughs> yeah. put you in their alumni section there. <laughs> right. If, <laughs> if, I could still, if I could still carry it, huh? <laughs> oh, and then after, when did you graduate from high school? I graduated in 1955. Okay. And then what was next? What, where did you I went to, to uh, La Crosse College, which is a state college. For two years and then I ended up at the University of Wisconsin for two more years. In Madison? In Madison. Okay, tell mm -hmm. us a little about college life. When did you, live on, you lived on campus? I lived on campus. I lived in one of the dorms and I can't for now think of the life and <laughs> think of the name of it. And uh, on campus I was, I was in communications so I was worked for the uh, university radio station for a while. Good. Well, that's kind of nice. And then I got married and left there. 10 credits short of a degree <laughs> and moved to New York. So, <laughs> What was Madison like in those days when you were there? Oh, it was pretty wild. It was very, uh, I like to say, uh, about a step ahead <laughs> of everywhere else. Interesting. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the athletics was big there, too. I'm it sure, was. Being the uh -huh. Big Ten. Uh -huh. uh, the school you went to before that was smaller? It, La Crosse was a small college. All The whole college system in Wisconsin was sort of based on teaching, and the major at La Crosse would have been physical education, okay. so teacher recreation, education. yes, and then one would be uh, business, and another was dramatics, another was home ex. So. Sure, okay. All right. So then well, after graduation, you say you went to New York? and I got married, and we moved to New York, and... And Where boss did you live in New York, in Manhattan? We lived in Long Island first. Okay. And the hurricanes that went through reminded me of sitting, looking out of my window, <laughs> watching the trees bend over. We lived near Jones Beach. New York was a really uh, strange step for me, coming from a like hundred or 1,400 people. <laughs> oh, yes, I would imagine, right. And getting in, getting yes. the navigation. And, and then we the moved in closer to the city because my husband traveled a lot, and so we moved closer to the airport. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, was, and did, uh, do you have children then? I have. Five, I had two, two there, and I had, uh, we moved to Cincinnati shortly after that. I had two more, and then we moved to Lafayette in 1966. Okay. What and was Lafayette I, like when you came? Was your husband's business bring him here? Yes, uh -huh. he was in a. He's a engineer, and he was in. A, Is he a Purdue engineer? He was not. <laughs> he was a, you know was, he I met him at Wisconsin, so he had his masters from there. But his other degree was from Manhattan College in New York. Okay, okay. So he was a real New Yorker, but loved Lafayette. <laughs> It was There's wonderful. a lot of cultural activities in New York, and you, do, you were able to avail yourself of those when you were We there. did, a little bit. Not right. as much with small children as, right. as we would have liked. Did your children go to school there, too? No. Oh, no. Right. In Cincinnati, they yeah. started school. Okay. In fact, go. that's not true either. They started school in Lafayette. My son was the first class at Cumberland Elementary School, my oldest son. Oh, very good. That's kind of it. And we actually lived about two blocks from where Bob and I live right now. <laughs> Interesting. What <laughs> yes. goes around comes around. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Well, then, uh, tell us that what was the campus like, and what was Lafayette like when you came in the '60s? Very much smaller, 
and uh, of course I when I went back to school that was again in the 70s by then but uh, the CDF building which I see is just about dwarfed over there <laughs> by research or discovery park right it's just so much more complex and so many more buildings than it's, it's grown a lot a lot yeah. and I was also too uh, coming back to school I was a grown up coming back and at age 36 to 40. Well, <laughs> so okay. how, that's how, a different kind of student. Were you just trying to finish it? Did you get your degree? I then? did. I went back and finished my undergraduate degree, and then this was at my husband died. We moved to St. Louis in the interim here in oh, the 70s. Oh, for the Yes. Okay. For his business, and he was killed in an airplane crash, and then my children and I moved back here. There were five of them by then. Okay. And I went back to school. <laughs> well, there was, and the children were in school too as well. They were. Yeah. I went back part time at first because that's where I really got into the child care business because that was in a place for me to work and take my daughter and then go to class in the afternoons. And so I didn't really have to leave them at all. I was able to take night classes. Hmm? You rode your bicycle. I did ride my bicycle down Grant Street. (laughs) And by the end of the year, I could ride up Grant Street. (laughs) Well, that's pretty good. It took a while. Okay. But I finished my degree. I needed to, to finish a Purdue degree. I needed 36 hours. Oh, my. So I finished a degree in uh, when, child development. Okay. Um, you were going, did you start part-time, then you went full-time? Then I went from, yeah, I never did go full-time. I okay. went for my master's degree the same way, and I got that in counseling mm-hmm. in 79. Who was who was your advisor in your the graduate program? Was that was that counseling was in school? Elaine Dolch. <laughs> in okay. un, my undergraduate program, Elaine Dolch was my advisor. Okay. okay. And then in the counseling in, in the program was Al, Al Segrist. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Then we'll tell us what uh, after you got your degree. Then what was next? Then I went to work. Meanwhile, while I was getting the degree, I took my first job ever at. Uh, Federated Church as a preschool teacher, and I remember never forget the interview with everybody on the board of the church for this little part-time job. <laughs> and from there, I went to see Father Hardebeck at Blessed Sacrament Church and said, "Could we start a nursery school here?" And he said, "Yes." So we we had preschool classes there for five days a week, and I hired a staff. And then from there, I opened the first kinder care that started, and that took about a year. And I left there and worked at Wabash Center <laughs> for a while. And then finally the opportunity came for, pre- I worked in the, ch- in the lab schools and taught in the child developments. And oh, here on campus? Yes, on campus for okay. one year. And then we got the bright idea that we needed child care. <laughs> so <coughs> Burtsfield School, we rented Burtsfield School, Purdue rented it. And they weren't really behind it in the beginning because I think the feeling well, back tell then us the was. Background. Were there some discussions? Or tell there us were. The yeah. background back then yeah. was we should use the facilities in, in the town. Purdue shouldn't be taking business away from businesses that were already established. But there was such a shortage of good child care. And Purdue were could school, provide the, that. <laughs> was uh, the church still continuing that, though? That Those were mostly preschools, okay. and we were talking about daycare, in, uh, in essence, for children who needed to be there. And I oh, think they. there were a lot of female staff coming to Purdue and husbands and wives who both worked at Purdue who felt there was a need for good child care for them. Okay, okay. So then we, this is, the, now you want to talk a little bit about that Purdue child care program, right? And we started at Burtsfield School in one room. For researchers, tell us where that's located. It's, it's West, Lafayette. Uh, West Lafayette on Lindbergh and uh, Salisbury Street. Okay. And it was a it was empty except for a full-day kindergarten. We rented rooms on one side, and eventually Wabash Center rented rooms on the other side, okay. which was a real good fit because we sort of went back and forth. Why was the building empty? Why were there cla- no They uh, consolidated the schools, and there just weren't that many students anymore. Okay. And Burtsfield was the oldest and probably wasn't Morton School. Would Morton School, Morton School was the oldest, but Burtsville was really probably located in an area where there weren't as many children. And Morton, I don't think Morton was even used then. That was abandoned Morton, too. It was Morton Happy was built Hollow. In 1929. Big, big pardon. Morton School was built in 1929. Yeah. But by then, Happy Hollow and Cumberland were the only two schools, except for an all-day kindergarten that we shared the hallway with. Okay. But we started out with 
we said, they said you have to have at least 20 students. <laughs> And so one of our first students I remember was Carolyn Gary, who was the vice president here at Purdue, was her son Michael, who's now 30-some years old. <laughs> and we started out with 20 and one teacher, Kim Rudman, I remember her. And we ended up with a two-year-old class. We never did have infants there because it just wasn't set up uh, bathroom-wise and every other-wise to do that with. What were the ages? <clears throat> From two, and then we eventually, in the years we were there, we started in 83, and by 88 they moved over on campus, and I didn't go with them. And uh, the ages were a two-year-old class, we had a three-year-old class, we had a preschool, a four-year-old class, and a, we had an all-day kindergarten. And we had a long waiting list. <laughs> What, were there so, costs involved or were fees and things? There were. We tried to get a kind of a sliding fee scale so that students could also afford this because it's, it's very expensive. Child care, good child care is quite expensive. We were able to purchase our meals at Stone Hall, and I spent many times <laughs> running over when the delivery guy didn't show up, <laughs> picking up the meals at Stone Hall, taking the dirty dishes back. We bought most of our furniture at the Purdue Salvage Barn. We bought, I remember these wonderful tables, they were for the chemistry labs, and we had parents who came in and cut the legs off them. <laughs> and wonderful. we bought chairs from Burtsfield School. They were selling a lot of the uh, furniture from there. The parents built us a playground in the back, fenced it in and put it up. Uh, my, I can remember my first office was in the old coat room and I can remember standing up and almost impaling myself on a coat hanger <laughs> or a coat hook <laughs> but uh, we made it somehow <laughs> well uh, tell the researchers there was somebody else you and someone yes, else. yes my uh, yeah. Elaine Dolch was an assistant professor in the child development and family studies and she taught a lot of the classes for early childhood uh, for the major and and she taught graduate study classes also so uh, she had tenure, <laughs> and that was great, <laughs> because a lot of times when we thought maybe this isn't going to work, we just kept on. We got student teachers eventually, and we also got uh, graduate students who had we who we paid. They used their money there to work for us, okay. and we got some. We found out too. You all always need kind of permanent staff because. Figuring, did, figuring out the schedule because you have to have so many adults per children for a child there. <laughs> well, you were lucky you had the background in education, yes. so you knew a little bit about it. A couple of later. times Purdue would have liked to say to us, we, we can send over someone from the secretary pool, and we said that's not kind of the someone we need. <laughs> so no, we're looking for right Yes, <laughs> so we Where were able to hire some permanent people. How did you recruit uh, the people that you did? Word of mouth, or well, we had to go through Purdue employment to, through that. What was the what was the affiliation? Was there a liaison with Purdue, or what was the affiliation? How did that? There was, in? but okay. we had to we had to pay for our own janitor. Really, everything had to come out of our budget, even the rental of the building. Okay. So you, the big liaison own? was we got uh, help through Purdue, and okay. we got probably through stores. We got better prices had we then. And we had to go out and shop for supplies sure. and things. Okay. Well, was they, um, they sort of helped out, or, or you had to set your own budget and get your own funding? We did. Okay. And what were the sources that you were The really sources used? were uh, parents paying fees, and that was it. What about the food? And that uh, food was all covered of that in came there? out of there. And all, <laughs> all that period of time, you still went to Stone Hall? We did. Wow. We did. That's interesting. In fact, I bought a Fiero one time because I got tired of being the one who had to go over and pick up the food. <laughs> Sorry, it won't fit anymore. <laughs> Did they take care but of But we got work-study students. So in, in essence, we got a lot of that kind of help from Purdue. We had, and the department did all of our printing and uh, got oh, the supplies, the, the CDFS department, okay. yes. What sort of programs did uh, you have? And what, did you have a, a, a parents group, too, as well? We did. Okay. We did with the we had a parents uh, council that kind of met. We met with them kind of once a month, and we did parent education programs. We really offered opportunities for a lot of students to get involved with research, 
I by mean, working with the by working with the students, the children. and also with doing things like conducting parent meetings and all. We didn't have to do those all ourselves because, really, we needed some reason to make Purdue a real part of this and make it special that way. And, by and I think we did. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was did you have, did you take them on trips to or some of the activities that you? We planned? did once in a while, but that was hard to do because all of our parents were working and we had no bus service. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, that would be hard. That was you kind of take hard a to bit do. Of a walk. We did have things come to us through Purdue. We had Purdue Pete, who scared the life out of everyone <laughs> in the two-year-old room, where they're mortified to see this. But we did have programs who came to us, people who parents who did special things and would come yeah. to the school, so was we didn't have to transport them. Was this all day? It was all day. It was okay. from six in the morning till six at night. And then uh, did the schedule correspond with Purdue? I mean, what did you do during the holidays and season? The we season? had only official Purdue holidays off. Otherwise, we went all through the summer. Okay. Our enrollment was down in the summer. But we never did take school-age children. We, we kind of didn't do that. Okay. We weren't really set up to do that. Right. So, Did the list inc uh, increase, I mean, as far as the enrollment? Oh, yes. We ended up with 80, 85 students, Is that I think. Was full capacity? Mm -hmm. okay. And a waiting list. And then they moved over near where the old theater used to be on McCormick Road. There used to be a Purdue Theater and a Purdue West Shopping Center in there. Mm -hmm. They moved to a building over there for a while, and then they ended up in Fowler, like where they are now. Where they are. Okay. So did that, uh, and then you, you, how long then did the program exist in, in Burtsfield, approximately? It opened in 83? And went through 88. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. And did uh, have you kept in touch with any of the see any of the students? I have. I, I have. I the see teachers? the students a lot. Not the teachers so much. I do. I did work at uh, Purdue. I went from that job to working as a counselor in the Craner Building. I was going to ask you about that. And I, I actually had, had a little a b little boy, a man, come through one day, and he went, "Are you Mrs. Letty?" <laughs> I said, "Yes." Are you Gavin? And he went, "Yes." And he said, "You were in my daycare." <laughs> so. What it about, went full uh, circle. Did you have a school nurse? What would happen if uh, something happened? Did you have a nurse or anybody that we did take? not? Okay. No. So you didn't have any problems. You just mm -hmm. called the parents and they would come. And we even had, like I say, we had to pay for our janitor service, and there was none. If there was in the first year, maybe officially, there was a janitor left at Birdsfield School by the school corporation. But eventually, we hired Wabash Center's janitor service. Okay. And what was Wabash Center do any doing in there? They the, had classrooms there. Okay. And that was that was kind of interesting because we really were interacting with them a bit, okay. and I think it was good for our kids t and right. for theirs they were, too. They were were they adults or they were children. All the, it was the, their preschool, and some of them had disabilities, some did not. Okay. And then there was but you said there was another unit, Wabash, just doing the Wabash Center. Was I worked there myself for a while, just okay. with their infant program. Sure. Yeah. But th you were, those were the only two units that were in Birchville School. I, yes. Well, and um, the the school corporation had one full time kindergarten, oh, full day okay. kindergarten. Okay. It was the first one that they tried back then. That's a busy so schedule, you know. We interacted yeah. there too, our kindergartners and their kindergartners. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, so. What about turnover of the teachers? Did uh, most of them stay on, or did and did some come? A on? lot of the, the head teachers did there, but there's a lot of turnover in child care, which is sad. But I, I think kids are adjustable, and when you have good people, and our student teachers were excellent, that was a great source of. Oh yeah. And even our grad students too, because a lot of them, their major was child development, sure. so, so they brought an extra. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Do you have special occasions like what, how we do for birthdays or? Anything? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. And we ran in the sprinklers out in the yard all summer. <laughs> that was the, the so, swimming. That was our swimming. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, any, uh, may, any other notes on uh, that you were going to say about this, the child care? And, and it continues today for the researchers. It over does. And, it right. does. In fact, I think now it includes infants. Okay. And they're even talking about building a larger center. What's if the I'm tie correct. in then with the uh, Patty Jeske uh, Care Center? That uh, I think that's the future of this child okay. care center because I think no, they're so to capacity where they are now. Uh, at the CDF uh, yes. and Fowler there? Okay. And then infant care was long a really need, a real need. And it, it's staffing and infant care is so much, you know, higher than right. regular. I think the big, big advantage we had, we became affiliated with NAEYC, which is the National Education for Young Children. 
Is it a professional association? It's a big professional association, and they have guidelines for what really good child care is. Mm -hmm. And it's not just custodial. It's just, it's more uh, sure. activity-oriented. And it's, it's just been a big advantage because Purdue was willing to do that, right. to go for that. What is the child care picture at the moment as you look at it, say, from Lafayette and West Lafayette? Is there... Enough facilities, or I don't know about that anymore. Back then, there certainly weren't enough good facilities. Okay. And in Indiana, as in other places, there's a lot of church-affiliated facilities, and that is not to say that they're not good, but they're not under any regulations. They they're not licensed. They're not licensed. No. no. Okay. And they, they, it must be hard sometimes to get people it to is, and continue. There's, and there's a need for that. There's a lot of home daycare, and there's, uh, of course, Tippecanoe County Child Care, and I've been on the board. As it was, Elaine Dolch was very important to yeah. their board also, and right. they do a good job of serving the community. Right. Well, is right. Elaine Dolch, is she still here? Or? She's not. She's retired and gone to live in Colorado. <laughs> so, How about that? She oh. had some health problems, and I think she's gone with her daughter, lives there. Oh, okay. So. Sorry. Let's talk a little bit about your, uh, you have some other notes on the center? I mean, I thought then we'd talk a little bit about your family, where your children are, and, and even go to Purdue. Well, actually, one of they all, a lot of them, <laughs> they didn't all finish. I have a, a son who graduated from Purdue, one who graduated from Ball State, who's an artist. The other one's uh, my where daughter. Does he, where does he have a studio here? And does, he works for what used to be Warren, and then used to be Rose Art, and used to be now is Mega Block, <laughs> and they designs puzzles and games. So and he's the Ball State one. Okay. And then my son, Sean, who graduated from here, works in Alpharetta, Georgia. He works for a drug company. And the older two, the oldest son, who went to Purdue for about s one semester, uh, and headed west, and he's the superintendent at a golf course in Arizona. And the second lives in Indianapolis in Avon. And he's married with two children okay. and works there. And then my daughter went to Arizona State, came back to had a, had a terrible motorcycle accident and ended up coming back to Purdue where she went into child development and she became a child life specialist in a hospital. They have that major also here. What's the, what's the major, what does she they do? They work with sick children in children's hospitals okay. and help them orient themselves to that kind of a, a life in the hospital or sometimes to surgery, to show them through the ropes first before it happens to them. Oh, that's not, Is she so, affiliated with one of the hospitals here she, in town? No, she, she's, she was at home hospital. In fact, Purdue started a small program there, but then she ended up in Kansas City in uh, Arkansas, and she's married with two children, and now she works as the, uh, at Memphis Baptist as the coordinator for volunteers. Oh, so. good. Well, that's very nice. <laughs> so. Okay. And you, you mentioned earlier, but uh, you did have an affiliation with the School of Management. Were you yes, I went to school? work as a counselor. Okay. Tell us a little bit about and, that. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> uh, we this all, was after the school. Yeah, moved. we all worked part-time. It was all older women like myself, and we all worked part-time. I think today they're all full-time, and it's a little different. But I was able to have time off, and I worked summers and some of that, and we worked for a day on campus, and... Uh, I just liked working with the kids there. They were a lot of yeah, fun. that's right. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, never saw the bride of day. Sometimes that's why I think we moved to Florida because I would come in the dark, go under the tunnel. We worked in the basement. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and the, went home in the dark. <laughs> seven to seven, right? Yes. Yeah, right. Okay. But I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, um, Chauncey Village. How's that changed? And uh, you talked, we talked about the campus, but that's certainly changed a lot, too. Yeah, it certainly has. Right, even the levee, you know. Yeah, well, yeah the, the levee in my life was just going to Sears. <laughs> there, that is no more. I know. <laughs> but it's very nice. We, we love going down there to eat yeah, and Triple X, things. of course, is here, and that's just a classic. That's right. And now that's that they've right. been on the uh, Food Network, people just drop yeah. in there from all over the all over the country and they sign little those little sli orange slips and yeah. hang it up there you know it's kind of interesting to see that when i worked here i kind of hung around the union <laughs> and ate in those places yeah so and that's even changed a lot too, yeah you know all of the you know. i have to tell you a story that was okay. a very safe place to go because i'm i'm a forgetful person sometime and i left my purse hanging on the chair there in the union at where i had lunch and about three o'clock i thought well, i'll have a cup of coffee and i went well where's my purse and it was still hanging there on the chair. <laughs> you were lucky. Knock on wood. <laughs> you were lucky. Oh. So, <laughs> oh. um, do you have, are 
do you continue it on in any of your professional associations or uh, no any, okay uh -uh. okay what's the uh, Birchfield school is there anything in there at the moment are they I, see I don't bikers. think there's anything no uh, I think they're going to tear I think it down it's kind of a staging area for bicyclists uh, when I'm uh, oh. I drive along there I see them parking their cars and they must yeah. meet there like after work well, or after something. we moved away they built a big building and behind there like a utility or a cafeteria kind of building and I'm sure I think they're going to leave that but I think the rest of Earth's field scheduled oh, okay. and yeah. it was old and needed a lot of yeah we, we had a lot of buckets sitting around when it rained <laughs> catching sounds like smitties <laughs> yeah catching water and then some of the windows we could hardly see out of they were <laughs> But who took care but of the lawn? Do they have to worry about that? I the think the school's corporation did that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you just had the, the janitor take care of the rooms and things mm -hmm. of that sort. Mm -hmm. That was that was a bit of a help anyway. And we the teachers them. do a lot of work. <laughs> we all pitch in, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, you got um, any other notes on the child care before I, that you'd like I to share? I don't think so. Um, I'm just... And uh, now you've got, uh, how did you happen to meet Bob? Well, through the child care, we were just discussing that today because I went over to the Purdue, the Purdue Press offices where he worked to try and have an ad put in the paper that we needed bicycles and trikes and wagons and toys if people wanted to donate them. And I met him there. And then lo and behold, he moved and donated us a wagon and a trike and <laughs> some things. So that that's was very kind nice. of how I met him. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, you, and he continues to stay in Lafayette. But then, well, tell us. We did. We moved to Florida after we both retired. Okay. For, for nine years. Okay. But it's nice to be there. Yes. <laughs> this is always kind yeah. of home. Boil Boilermaker country. Yes. yes. Right. How about a favorite Purdue tradition? Do you have one that you'd like to share with us? Oh, I love to sit at the football game on a great day and hear Roy Johnson <laughs> talk about waving your finger across the blue sky. <laughs> It's, it's I color. like that. Yeah, it's very <laughs> yeah. good. And that's not, the the uh, saying that he says is quite. You uh -huh. know, it, it's and quite we hardly ever missed a Christmas parade just to see the band, Purdue band, march down the street and watch everybody back up three feet. <laughs> Even though well, and the then weather's I always nice, took our my children, my own children, to the band practice over at the. Field there. We, the yeah, apple. we stopped at the apple farm and then to the van practice. Oh, that's <laughs> so. not, I miss the, ap uh, the, the apple farm. Yeah. I do too. <laughs> yeah, we used to buy quite a few of them out there. Yeah. yeah. How about an outstanding event? At, uh, I think like going back to college was an outstanding event in my life. I loved it. I just really did. All right. And, and then lately, I've I've had an eagle and a hole in one. I'm a golfer. <laughs> so well, tell us a little bit so about I'll what you <laughs> in your post Purdue years. Tell in us a little bit about what you're doing. Years, yeah. I, play golf and quilt and we used to travel a little bit we don't as much anymore uh -huh. since, since Bob's been ill but we I do spend my time on the golf and you, course. Are you, you're involved with some activities uh, you mentioned about the art museum you're involved yes with the I am I am you're involved with some of the things in the community mm -hmm. okay any closing comments or anything special you'd like to share with us I don't think so I just am very proud of the Purdue child care even though it's been a long time and no one probably even remembers me <laughs> or oh, heard well, of me. <laughs> well, this is nice because I think a lot of people they now that because of the Patty Jeske they working it, but they didn't realize that how we started, it, how you started, and that's the purpose of the of the interview. And right. I think it'll be really, you know, it's very yeah. important. And I'm very proud of what it became because at the time people said, you know, I don't think so, you know. Yeah. Chime in. Number of grandchildren do you have? Oh, well, <laughs> That's not kind of my doing. But this is post Oh, post okay. Twitter, well, right? I have uh, nine. <laughs> and Bob has three, so we have well, yeah, an even a dozen. dozen. An even That's dozen, nice. right? Yes. You, but you enjoyed your time down in Florida, though, didn't you? We did. We did. We did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. We did, we did a lot of traveling when we were there. And um, so we saw everything there was to see around Florida that was in, within driving distance. <laughs> Did it all. Uh, okay. Any clo any other comments that you can think of that you'd like to share? I don't think so. Okay. And thank you for this opportunity. I thank you very much. This concludes it. Thank you, Mrs. Hopkins. I appreciate that. <clears throat> this is an epilogue to the interview. I, I forgot Stockton. to mention earlier that some of the, the uh, real attributes of having the Purdue Child Care was the diversity of students we had. And one I, that brings me to mind a lot is uh, a little boy from Cambodia whose mother was a graduate student, and she dropped him off the first day, and he knew not one word of English. 
and we didn't know that. <laughs> and he spent most of the day looking out the window, <laughs> saying, Mama, Mama. He wouldn't eat. And finally, we discovered he liked ketchup, and he ate ketchup on all the food. <laughs> I don't know what he was used to eating before he got with us. And when he left, we bought him a giant jar of a giant bottle of ketchup <laughs> to take with him. But he and a lot of the other little kids who knew not one word of English, within six weeks, understood, and within about two months, we're sp we're speaking, and right. it was amazing. Did you have television there too? For the, did they even watch TV with children? We had partners? videos we could play in oh, the late maybe. afternoon, like on Friday afternoons. We always popcorn and had videos. And oh, that's nice. So we had something that special to do on Friday, <laughs> right? Because they were some of them were there from six in the morning till six at night. And that's a long, long day. Yes, that's a long day. Did any of them uh, cry or bring them? Or they oh, yes. Them? Oh. They brought their little animals with them and little pets. And we had cots for them to sleep on. And I can remember we had identical twins who came from the married student housing. And they would change clothes to fool us because we didn't know <laughs> which one was which. <laughs> That's not fair. And, no, and the mother said, well, uh, this one's going to wear these color, this color socks, and this one will wear this color. And then they used to trade their socks during the days so, <laughs> to fool us. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think the diversity of the classroom was just amazing and wonderful. Did you have wonderful. many international? Uh, a lot, a lot. Uh, yes. Okay. We had, I think I look back now and tell people I never ate sushi, but I think I did because <laughs> we had a Japanese mother who brought in snacks. And looking back, this is exactly what it looked like. So. Did they did, could they eat the American food though that you got? They did. Don't, oh, they did. They yeah. liked it. Yeah, that's okay. In fact, people children ate food that their parents said, "I don't think they'll eat that," and they did. <laughs> and a lot of broccoli. <laughs> so. Oh dear. Okay. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs>